Oh my gosh, I love this already. So this is the uh, KFC dating simulator. I love you, Colonel Sanders. Finger licking good dating simulator. I don't know how this is going to be, so I decided to do it off stream, though I would usually do it on stream, but I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna start a new game. What is my name? Chef, Chef, Colton Bree. Yeah, I think that's a nice name. I think that's a really nice. They're gonna have to say that every single time they talk to me. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in a moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Ah. Uh, smack it. Laying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you in the prestigious University of Cooking School and Academy of for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? The time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. Oh, I'm a daydreamer. It's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. You have so many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late now. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Wait, was that BTS on the wall? Mmm, delicious. Just what you need to wake up those taste buds. You're running it. You're in such a hurry. In fact, you forgot to put any deodorant on before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend, Mirami. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. She's the most adorably awkward person you'll ever meet, and you absolutely love her. Good morning, chef. Chef, 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 free. <laughs> You're excited for the first day of the rest of our lives. Actually, I'm not even a chef anymore because I sure am excited and a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot of bit nervous. Uh, uh, what? Huh? It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but well, I ate it and I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Class is Mirami. Ray is my master chef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies, playing together, and you rescued me from that quick sandbox. <laughs> that quick sandbox, it's been clear to me that you, you're you the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. <laughs> Stop crying. But the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's favorite three-day... Famous three-day only semesters. I'm afraid I'll be left behind and never catch up. Their school's only three days long. A sweet girl, Mirami, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Why is she so precious? Can you believe I cut them myself? I can't even tell. You can definitely believe it. No... Before you can say another word, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's a... Alicia? Your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Uh, hi, Alicia. Alicia? Oh, I didn't see you there. Chicken shin shin. You leave the chef shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Uh, you can't stand Alyssa Leia. But even her name is annoying. And I can't even say it properly. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. Oh. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better from everyone. <laughs> what? Where? We're, what? We're not gonna let you or your weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend Van Van, the man Van, has <laughs> stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. 
Ahem, Van Van. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah! Ashley and Van Van have just been as close as you and Miriam. But substantially, I'm more, a lot more devious. I can't believe the University of Cooking School, the Academy of Learning, would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand over our diplomas now? Or maybe hire us on as professionals that you amateurs could learn a lot from us. Let's go, Miriam. <laughs> see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. <laughs> Oopsies. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, yeah, that should do it. I love you. Uh, I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Also, the name tag clearly says Bob. <laughs> but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I, I'm, 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 I'm Chef Chef. <laughs> so, you gonna make me hold the door all day? Nope. With that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? What? He's like five. It's just you. <sighs> a scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. <laughs> no, no, everyone. Quiet down. He must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. What? A dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you at as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then... He walks. <laughs> I'm taking this serious. I'm taking this serious. I'm taking this serious. <laughs> You're immediately swept up in an aura of this new student in his remarkable goatee. Oh, he... Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time just stand still. It's one of my favorite students. Harlan! Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. And you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open the window back up before a faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. You, you both know my name. We're in the same kindergarten class. What's with the weird insults? A sweat. Who is this man? Who is this man? Oh. Besides, when Chef Chefferie sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Please don't. Please. Please, don't talk about my sweat like this. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Boy, how do this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer? I... Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. <laughs> Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're mortified. Uh, thank you. I'm gonna use this on my armpits first and then I'll use it on my back and you stretch your hand out and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it on your face But when you do the feeling is transcendent and it has this natural scent on it, it smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled Welcome to the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning the greatest culinary Academy in the world the birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears and there will be blood. Lot of blood. <laughs> there will even be adorable tiny food. 
Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi, oh I'm sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss. Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? It's my third year in the school with, my, with you as my teacher. Let that be a lesson to you, students. That tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town in his tiny wheels. <laughs> You've never had a talking dog as a teacher, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. Um... Do you want a chicken snack? You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The fairy professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey! Hey, bestie! There's still a seat over here! It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh! I'm romancing. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect, upright posture shows off his seriousness that makes you confident is to his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me a seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Inspiring. A little off topic, you ask me, but okay. Think fast. Time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me. Keep your knives sharp and focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and travel and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? <laughs> Extremely, I'm looking at you, Pop. That's right. Forest is a tree as chicken is to night fishing goggles. <laughs> That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. Food is best for a broken heart. Uh Something that wants love and not too much salt. Is Sprinkles a good boy? He's a talking about the teacher of color. He's the best boy. The total score is perfect. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain and you smell like uh, anchovies. Hot diggity dog. Chef Chef, you just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It's making that sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. But I... Lunch, lunch, lunch. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. <gasps> that must be the smell I smelled. Indeed. That smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head, its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept! For starters, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. 
By my calculations, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. What? You don't think we want to keep your stupid secret ingredient, dude? Psha, Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of these ingredients is uh, poison. Got him. You wait to see what zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, I was like, um, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful and I knew at a moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry a chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any. I'll take his. Well, hold on. I mean, uh, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you into another dimension. The flavor in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Along with the flavor, she feels something that only can be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? Uh, Colonel. <laughs> I was wondering if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on the chicken? <gasps> How bold of you just to come and ask. It's an idea I've had for new combinations of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all the time to come as I open my chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. <laughs> no big deal. It's just you and me are here talking, and I can keep a secret. In fact, I've uh, got some of my own if you're willing to trade. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leads in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, I can tell you. I use... It's something my great-grandmother told me. Wow, you never would have guessed that. While you're wrapped up in the huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Alone, together for the first time, you figure it out. Now's the perfect moment to show him your personality. Wow. Wow, you you pretty you pretty good man with that uh big bleep of a recipe. Actually, I had some thoughts on how you can improve it. Wow, that's a dick move. <laughs> improve it. You want to change my secret recipe, and you think you can do it better? Ever heard of habanero peppers? <gasps> heard of them? I attend an entire garden of chili pepper varieties: habanero, poblano, cayenne, and that's not even to the point. You can't just toss new ingredients in my secret recipe and expect to improve it. I, I really did. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Let this be the last time you improvise on my recipes, uh, Chef Shuffery. I'm hand, heading back to class for uh, the next lesson. Well, that pretty much went as I planned, but apparently I didn't. You better head inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow it, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature and adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> That's so sad. Hey, uh, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? Me and you? That wasn't clear. Wanna be a partner? Aw, sure, 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 chef. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Uh, hello, new partner. Beep, boop, zip, bop. Hmm. Oh my, two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you have to pick for her. Uh, I think Clank is a better option than a f Nick Pop. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. 
Clink is clearly excited to have some attention and he heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignments yet. Bzzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Look at you two. You'll be fine. All right, you two. For today's lesson, you'll be going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. Which dish do you suggest? Steak tartare, octopus. Grandma's mashed potatoes. I've always been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy? Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. I've already screwed up like three times with him and I've known him for five minutes. Sanders heart is my business and you better keep your fingers off my man. Does someone call for me? No, gee, Van. Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He How do they, Ashley Van Van? Are we working a quartet instead of a duet now? Uh. Uh, actually, no. It looks like Chef Chefferie was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. I was gonna say Colonel Sanders, but, uh, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. But, Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this, uh, thing that has positioned themselves at your station. We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. He ain't having it. Do you need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly? Is somebody threatening my best friend? I will totally destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Ryan were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but uh, she's my partner for today's activity. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavors. Colonel Sanders extends his hand holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. A result looks spectacular. Oh. Colonel Sanders holding the spork out to you, you reach out and hold, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world just stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right at Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Swooping a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Hold on right there, Chef Chefry. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have mashed potato face? <laughs> mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared full meal gaze at my speciality. Praise tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plate it on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long and that ends now. It is I who will have the first bite and you will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bit of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't. The result could be toxic. Too late. It had been eaten. Uh, I think I left something in the oven. It killed him. Wait. <laughs> Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look at the plate, the rest is gone. You notice the tip of a tentacle slurped in Pop's mouth. He winces in pain for a moment and then almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsies. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just, I just turned, turned into a ghost over here. 
Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all this nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like for real? Come on. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not my great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food in the beginning. Uh, Colonel Sanders? Yeah, chef. Really, chef, chef? There's, uh, something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. When I was a boy, I had a dream. Uh, one day I'd be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. You should follow your dreams with all our hearts. That's the soul may grant them like wishes upon the shooting star. Shut up! I'm the one here to say the inspirational stuff and I'm trying to copy your accent. Be the star of the story. I mean, we're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what is this game? <laughs> this black monster is here to fight a hero. <laughs> Later, nerds! Be afraid, be very afraid, because of me. I'm a monster. Is it turn beans fighting? <laughs> oh, you do attack. Which attacks with. <laughs> Cookie with love does one damage. The attack really upset the spork monster. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit up <laughs> gravy at you. You take one damage. D defend. Trepidation. <laughs> You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How do you respond? Attack? I love again. They go on the attack once again. Uses utilitensil. Attack. Cook with love. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Wow, villain, your reign of terror ends here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. <laughs> pop, pop, punch. Pop, pop, punch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Bear him. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back and follow up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. <laughs> the spork monster scuffles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It's a book of magic spells with golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover to find a library card tucked inside. The last name that I assigned it out was Borko. Hmm. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely de depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your own covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders, but for some reason, Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz